Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Fraud is defined as the deliberate misrepresentation that causes a person or a business to suffer damages, often in the form of monetary loss through deception or concealment. In 2014, Elizabeth Holmes, then 30 years old, was at the top of the world. She was a Samford University dropout, and she had founded a company that was valued at $9 billion, and it supposedly was bringing about a revolutionary change in diagnosing disease. With just a few drops of blood, Theranos promised that its Edison test could detect conditions such as cancer and diabetes quickly without the hassle of an IV needle. Big wigs from Harry Kissinger to General James Mattis sat on the board, but by 2015, the scene were coming apart and within a year Holmes was exposed as a fake. The technology that she toted didn't work at all. Hi, welcome to Lovely TTV. Please make sure to smash the like button and don't forget to hit subscribe down below. A woman, a mother, a powerful figure, you are still going to be treated equal under the law. That is what federal prosecutor Robert Leach described the Theranos scam as one of the most white collar crimes ever committed in Silicon Valley. In a scathing 46-page memo, Leach urged the judge to send a message to curb this type of behavior unleashed by the tech boom in the last 30 years. Even though Holmes was acquitted of four counts of fraud and conspiracy tied to patients who took the Theranos blood test, Leach also asked the judge to factor in the health threats posed by Holmes's conduct. Evidence submitted during her trial showed the test provided wildly unreliable results that steered patients toward wrong treatments. Holmes lawyers painted her as a selfless visionary who spent 14 years trying to revolutionize the healthcare industry. They asserted that Holmes never stopped trying to perfect the technology until Theranos collapsed in 2018. In January of 2022, she was convicted by a jury in California on four counts of fraud each of which carry a maximum sentence of 20 years in prison. The jury found her not guilty on four other charges and failed to reach a verdict on three more. Holmes, who had pled not guilty to all charges, sought a new trial, but those requests were denied. She was sentenced to 11 years and three months in prison. So now let's get into the crooks of the matter. To me, when I look at the Elizabeth Holmes situation, all I see is the whole damsel in distress trope. And I also see the white privilege behind Elizabeth Holmes. Elizabeth Holmes knew how to play the gender game very well. She was hailed as the second coming of the modern day Madonna in Silicon Valley. The girl genius who socked it to the good old boys club with her revolutionary medical invention. She was literally the living embodiment of the old saying, fake it till you make it. And Elizabeth Holmes did just that. Holmes and her lawyer claimed that she was a victim of patriarchy. In unsealed court filing, her lawyers wrote that she suffered intimate partner abuse at the hands of her former lover and business partner, Ramesh Sonny Belwani. During the trial, Holmes accused her ex-boyfriend and business partner, Sonny Belwani, of emotional and sexual abuse at the time of the alleged crimes, impairing her mental state. Belwani, 56, who faces the same fraud charges, was convicted in July and is due to be sentenced in the month of December. He called her claims outrageous. Holmes, the fair, young, innocent white maiden, was 18 when she met the dark, sinister 37-year-old Belwani. Suffering alleged physical and mental abuse at the hands of her older Pakistani-born boyfriend, they played into the white maiden being menaced by the sinister, dark, Middle Eastern man trope. It was straight out of Othello. Elizabeth Holmes is literally an avatar for white female privilege. Think about it. How could Elizabeth have duped so many high-powered men mainly, right, and risen to such ridiculous heights? At one point in time, she was worth 
$4.5 billion herself alone if she didn't have the white privilege slash white woman card in her deck. Elizabeth's rise in the hyper-competitive Silicon Valley reads like a fairy tale of some sort. It seems inevitable that this princess would definitely get everything she dreamed of. Elizabeth's privileged background prepared her for that role. She is the daughter of a former Enron executive, and she went to the Tony Private School in Houston, which is a very prestigious school. It's very hard to get in there unless your parents really come from big money. After that, she went to Stanford University. Now, she dropped out after a year, but it's very hard to imagine a woman of color dropping out of college at the age of 19 and then securing sky-high funding in the way that Elizabeth Holmes did. She raised over $700 million, and her company ended up evaluating after a few years at $9 billion. While women in general have a hard time getting funding in tech, for minority women, especially black women in particular, the odds are just ridiculous. Women make up 2% of venture capital funding and black women make up 0.3%. Bari Williams, who was a counselor at Facebook in the University of California, um, stated that black women face constant questions and seldom get funding for their potential. They would have been asked, why didn't you get such and such scholarship? Do you have a certain GPA? Why would you drop out and not finish college? And because the funding from these venture capitalists are far and few between, it pits a lot of women of color against each other because there's already a minority share. And then you have a lot of women, you know, who are all vying for these funds and they don't get them. So it's very interesting how Elizabeth Holmes People didn't even think twice about funding to her. But let's keep it real. You got to look at the daddy Warbucks factor, okay? Um, Elizabeth Holmes is a daughter of an Enron executive, meaning that she was able to be paraded in front of powerful white men, including Harry Kissinger, who described her as ethereal, to the New Yorker. She also got funding from the likes of George Schultz, Sam Nunn, William First, uh, James Mattis, David Boys. She even attracted bigwigs like Rupert Murdoch, who reportedly invested $100 million into Theranos, and he lost all of that money. And let's also not forget that former president Bill Clinton also co-signed her. And as we all know, he loves anything young and pretty, honey. So were they all dazzled by her brilliance and charm? Or did Elizabeth remind them of their own daughters who needed nurturing? Could a young woman of color assume the role of a daughter to so many established rich white men in the same way that Holmes did. They literally pulled out the checkbook with no questions asked and funded this entire woman's dreams, goals, and scam. One thing I did notice is that during her trial, she was definitely polishing her Demsel in Distress Act. For starters, she was no longer wearing that Steve Jobs black turtleneck. Her hair was not pulled back. She let her hair flow loosely around her face. She wore a lot of bright feminine colors. Now, if you guys remember, when she first hit the scene, this bitch was walking around sounding like Barry White. She was talking like this. My name is Libby Holmes. Well, it's wonderful to be here. I started this company because... And what about the deep voice? Did she have the deep voice when you were dealing with no. her? No. I was shocked when I heard her voice. Because I didn't matter before. I certainly, that is a voice you don't forget in a woman. Oh, hello. <laughs> yes. The right to protect the health and well being. It was very interesting that once she got charged with fraud and her company fell apart, all of a sudden, honey, she went from Barry White to Karen White and was literally trying to place all the blame on her Pakistani ex boyfriend. So it's very interesting how her whole demeanor, you know, that stoic personality that she had, all of that facade crumbled as soon as she got into trouble and she wanted to shift the blame onto somebody else. The fact that this scammer was able to find a new man two years after her fraud had been exposed also says a lot about her. Her husband, Billy Evans, is the heir to the Evans Hotel Group. So he's not just some bum ass dude. He has a lot of money. He comes from a long line of money. And it was very interesting that as soon as they got married, she wasted no time getting knocked up. 
not once, but twice, which helped to push the trial date back several times. This trial has literally been going on since 2019, and a lot of the pushback was due to her pregnancy. Now, during her court proceedings, you would often see her coming to court sporting a diaper bag instead of, a, you know, a Birkin or, you know, a Louis. She always had a diaper bag because she wanted the jury to not forget that she's a new mom and she's just trying to stay out of prison so she can raise her babies. She got knocked up not once but twice, knowing that she was facing 20 years in prison because she wanted to play up on the super busy mom sympathy card. And I saw through the nonsense as soon as I saw her diaper bag. The thing that's bothersome about the case is that many people of color are constantly told to pull themselves up by the bootstrap. We rarely get help in these spaces, let alone get connections to even go into these spaces to be able to pitch our ideas to a Henry Kissinger or a Rupert Murdoch. If anything, we get a lot of our drive and tenacity straight out the mud. A lot of us are the epitome of pulling ourselves up by the bootstrap with little help and often no fanfare. This company raised $900 million from investors. They committed to giving her money without reviewing audits, without reviewing financial statements. Elizabeth Holmes was an arrogant, narcissistic grifter. Let's call her exactly what she is. And I think the saddest thing in all this is that you had a black man literally caping for Elizabeth. Now, if you guys don't know, back on November 18th, we had posted a story that that New Jersey senator, Cory Booker, basically requested a lenient sentence for Elizabeth Holmes. So this is what the New York Post wrote. In a letter to Judge Edward J. Davala, the New Jersey Democrat said he bonded with Holmes, a fellow vegan, over a bag of almonds at an event hosted by the late GOP Senator John McCain. He says, in the years since, I've always been struck by the way our conversation focused on her desire to make a positive impact on the world. I believe that Miss Holmes has within her sincere desire to help others to be of meaningful service and possesses the capacity to redeem herself. Booker was one of 100 people who wrote the judge, urging the judge to go easy on the scammer before the sentencing on Friday. What I find very interesting about this is Corey didn't grow up with this woman. Corey didn't go to school with her. Um, she wasn't like, you know, his best friend growing up. He literally shared a bag of almonds with her at a GOP event. And he had the audacity to write a letter on her behalf. I just thought that was such poor judgment, especially when you have people who are doing years in prison behind something as simple as weed. Are you writing letters for damn near every inmate in New Jersey who's in there for years in prison on a weed offense? I think not, but yet and still he had no problem writing this letter on behalf of Elizabeth Holmes. You know, I just find this whole situation insane that he would write a letter to this scammer. But thank goodness the judge was smart enough to completely ignore him and the other weirdos who wrote sympathy letters on behalf of Elizabeth Holmes. And that judge sentenced her to 11 years. She was looking at 20 and personally, I think she should have got the whole 20. But, you know, I'm not the judge. As someone who personally has to get blood work done, it is imperative that the results are accurate and true to form. For her to scam people was heartless and very detrimental. Her machine was literally diagnosing people with cancer that they did not have. Imagine getting blood work done and they're telling you that you have cancer. Stage four. And you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to die in the next few months. Only to find out those results were false. The machine also told people, hey, you're pregnant. People who have been trying for years to have babies. So now they're excited. They're thinking they're pregnant. They're going to their OBGYN only to find out, yeah, you're not pregnant. So this machine caused a lot of chaos. Imagine if some of those people who were diagnosed with cancer started getting chemotherapy treatments. Thank goodness all of those people went and got a second evaluation where they found out, no, you don't have cancer, but what if they didn't get a second evaluation and they went forward with getting chemo treatments that they did not need? This woman is an agent of chaos, and she didn't care. The only thing she cared about was her name, her status, and her getting that money, okay? So I have no sympathy for this woman whatsoever, and I'm very disappointed that Cory Booker would even write a letter on her behalf. She sold a faulty product and she knew it. Just like her Enron daddy, okay? Remember, Enron was one of the biggest fraudsters before this whole FTX situation, but that's a whole nother video, honey. 
So it's clearly obvious scheming and frauding is in her bloodline. And to me, she's just as guilty as her co-CEO, Belwani. And they both should serve a similar sentence, in my opinion. So I leave the question up to you guys. What do you guys think about the whole Theranos situation? What do you guys think about Elizabeth Holmes? And do you agree with me that white privilege played a very intricate role in everything we've seen over the past few years with this woman? Everything from her trial date being pushed back to all these huge names investing into her company with no real receipts. No real backing as to what she was doing. She was just a pretty blonde and she was sticking it to the good old boys club. And that was enough for some people to invest literally millions of dollars into this woman. Black folks can only hope to even get a quarter of what this woman got for us to push the things that we want to be innovative about. So it's really sad, you know, the, the benefits that came to this woman simply because of who her father was and simply because of the connections that she had. So on that note, you guys, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Once again, make sure you guys like this video. Feel free to share it. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely TV Show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely TV Show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.